Hey YouTube, I'm Tyke Andrews there doing another action figure review and today we're having a look at the last figure of Wave 1 of the G.I. Joe Ultimates figures from Super 7 and this is one I hadn't picked up initially but I decided to pick him up. Now he was loose so I'm bringing in Jay, Lady J's box. He would have come in a box similar to this. This is obviously not his one, this is Lady J's. He is Snake Eyes, but you would see the exact same stuff for his box and would be the slip cover with the brown mailer box and you would have the green logo or the green deco, camouflage deco with the emboss and the G.I. Joe, raised G.I. Joe uh, logo. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now back to G.I. Joe picked this guy up loose second hand I, he did not come with any box so um he is the ultimate version of snake eyes he is based on his sunbow sunbow animation of the first suit that he wore wore he actually had his more iconic uh visor look later on in the series but this is from one of the first most iconic episodes where he sacrifices himself Come on! We'll never forget you. For what you've done, Snake Eyes. We owe you our lives. Um, so if you're familiar with Sunbow, a Sunbow animation from the G.I. Joe, the Real American Hero line, you will recognize this particular look for Snake Eyes. So I'll bring the tape measure in fair, straight off the bat. As he goes tumbling over, his ankle joints are a little bit loose. For my liking i might try and uh, strengthen them up a bit but he does stand around the seven inch mark which is where all these um somehow uh, or ultimates line figures come into uh, effect so he comes with a bunch of accessories so one of which is on him but i'll do the loot stuff that i have loose first and he does come with one of his he's the only gi joe figure so far out of both cobras and joe's to come with the animal companion and that is his trusty wolf timber or timber wolf timber if you want to go down that route so his main weaponry that he comes with because it wasn't established that he was a ninja yet he was back, still a commando he doesn't come with any swords even though he is like the ninja of the gi joe team but that would come later on in the series he has the standard brownish kind of brown and gray or almost beige and gray laser rifle it comes with a all gray dark gray laser pistol sorry if my hands look a bit wonky i was spray painting earlier and it's over spray kind of got on my hand so it comes with a pistol that is directly lifted from that same episode where he sacrifices himself he uses this a few times in that episode he comes with a walkie talkie now this is the larger version walkie talkie so series one the two figures, that, the two Joe figures that were in that line had two large version walkie talkies, which is Duke and Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes is the only one that doesn't come with an alternate head um, profile, mainly because he he's never unmasked in the show, so he's wearing the whole thing. So you do have a kind of slightly larger, wider grip hand for both left and right that will hold that walkie talkie. But that is also, those larger grip hands are also intended for his other accessory, which is this which is the radioactive Cobra logo pod that they steal in the Antarctic. Or is it Antarctic? It's up in the in a, a snowy tundra area. Um, basically, the episode is they're trying to stop Cobra from... I can't remember if they're, it's part of the Primer of the Darkness stuff or if it's one of the um, the other episodes where they're, it's the mass device one where he's, or the Weather Dominator episodes. He's, they're trying to stop Cobra from stealing some radioactive material or mining radioactive material. And they get ambushed by Cobra. And in the process, Co uh, Snake Eyes here sacrifices himself by sealing himself in the room with all the radioactive gas. He manages to escape later on. And while he's wandering in a kind of wooded area, he's holding, clutching onto one of these canisters, these radioactive canisters, while glowing orange. And or a kind of an orangey red color there's like a 
glow all around him and he ends up meeting up with Timber at the same point. So, and then as the rest, as I say, is history. Uh, he comes with a jump pack or jump pack. Jump, J-U-M-P. Can't remember what the acronym stands for, but it's an iconic G.I. Joe device. Mostly uh, UX uh, kind of familiarize this with stars and stalker he used to use one quite a lot but um this one is actually quite nice it's on the same kind of strap system as the other backpack so it's not a peg hole on the back and these don't open up you just slip them over the arms just as i showed and what's interesting is actually they went out of the way and they did thruster nozzles on the inside or kind of like a turbine effect you can see it kind of looks like it turns which is kind of cool it gives that effect um He's the only figure so far to have one of these backpacks. I would imagine going down the line, if they do Sergeant Stalker, he might come with one as well because he was kind of well known for using one. It was a kind of common G.I. Joe uh, transportation, I suppose you would call it, where he would, uh, when he did Joe's, would throw one on and kind of jump into battle or jetpack into battle. So before we go on to the figure, we'll just go through the other hand accessories he comes with. So he comes with the two default punchy hands. As I said, he comes with those wider grip hands, which are more for holding. It's for holding onto this thing. You can kind of, it doesn't grip it per se, but it kind of just rests in it. So there's no kind of tight grip, but he can hold it and have a kind of position to under, is slung under his arm. Now the two hands are in him are the opposite ones of these. So you get a left and right trigger hand and you get a left and right slightly less grip hand but it's for holding the barrel of the laser rifle. Um, as I said, the walkie-talkie is more of a nicer fit in the slightly wider hand option, but you can, oops, if I just get it, pick it up, you can kind of put it into the sand, but it's kind of more at an angle. So you can have him hold the walkie-talkie in both hands, but it's up to yourself which one you want him to go with. And then for his main pièce de resistance of a accessory he comes with timber and timber is actually done quite nicely he has multiple joints so he has rotation here at the head a slight up and down with that he has a rotating head at the back of the or back of the neck and uh, rotating here uh, rotation swivelish kind of more i think it's more of a ball joint than swivel he does have kind of ball jointed front legs and he does have a single hinge on the leg with a swivel and he has, it's better on this one, he has articulation on the ankles for his paws. His back legs are a little bit more limited. He The back legs don't have this air, uh, kind of ball joint or ball socket. His tail does move. Now, it is worth noting that he is kind of designed to be in a kind of somewhat... Uh, you can get him in poses, but he is in kind of supposed to be kind of a walking pose. You can see the way... His front legs are designed, one of these are actually more forward than the other. You can see this one would be up here if it was match. They're, they're not, is it asymmetrical or symmetrical? He's not symmetrical, he's more asymmetrical. So, oh, you have that. The back legs seem to be only hinged, or just a swivel hinge. It doesn't have that in and out, at least this one doesn't seem to have it. He does have the upper kind of ankle and then the uh, ankle by the toe so there's that kind of you know the dog the secondary ankle whatever you call it on animals he does have that or elbow if you want to call it an elbow but um he does have that and he still has the rotating foot the only thing is he doesn't have that same kind of range of movement on as he does on the front legs so he doesn't have the swivel these are just pure hinge so you can see where it's on the leg there. It's just a pure hinge. And he does stand quite well. You kind of have to splay his front legs out a little bit to get him to stand. But he does stand reasonably well. It would have been nice to have an alternate face profile like they did with the classified one where you have a more open mouth version of him. Uh, he's in the detailing for the face isn't too bad. It's actually quite nice. He's in kind of just a neutral kind of pose. But a kind of snarling kind of look would be would have been nice to have an alternate profile but he only comes with the one head as well and that brings us 
to snake eyes. So I'm going to bring in comparisons first, just so you can see him in scale with his other Joe team members that they've released so far. So here he is next to Flint. And you get Flint to stand up there. Here he is with his wave one wave mate, which is Duke. Way to go, snake eyes! And then bring in Lady J, who's rocking a shotty that I yoinked off a Fortnite figure. One of the McFarlane Fortnite figures. Again, it, if you have the Fortnite, or not the Fortnite, if you have the McFarlane sort of 7-inch scale weaponry, it does tend to be a little bit nicer. It seems to be a bit better than kind of the NECA stuff. I find the hand handles on some of the NECA ones are a bit too slim, and they tend to fall out of the hands. They are meant to be both the same scale, 7-inch scale, so, and they do tend to be a little different. But it doesn't look too bad altogether. So, and then just move these guys off to the back here. We shall get some articulation rundown on this guy. Now, one thing that is interesting as well, again, before I go on about this guy, I know this is a kind of main thing. With this body design and with the way they've done this, now, he is a fairly generic. Uh, the original figure was a fairly generic, just all black figure. They did base this off the cartoon where they did, instead of it being all black because it would have been harder to animate, they did a purple-ish, kind of a dark navy blue suit with a, the purple trim. So I'm assuming that was an animation thing so you could see the the character a bit better and it would stand out a little bit better on the backgrounds. Because they did go with the, the other suit, his more iconic ninja suit or the ninja commando suit with the kind of night style visor later on in the show and they did that in more of a grayish blue so it was still kind of a not black a full black uh thing but it was a bit different coloring to this other, but other than that he is a really nice figure and the point i was trying to make is because you have this body buck and this design uh super seven would find it pretty easy and it would be silly of them not to utilize it because the original animation style for short fuse grunt uh stalker zap uh who else uh there's nearly at least four five characters off the top of my head that i can name that using utilizing this design this main body design with just repositioning parts on them and having a different web gear thing here on the chest would actually make it easier because stalker uh the stalker figure is pretty much the same thing except he has a pocket up here he doesn't have these um uh, shoulder pockets he still has the same or at least nearly identical uh, straps on him obviously his head is different he has the african-american hands or the the african uh look to him and he has the beret and obviously his iconic face and design but he's done in green instead of this so it's the same bodysuit basically but in green with kind of a camouflage pattern on it so they could easily utilize this they could easily reuse this as well to make generic green shirt uh gi joes because that is basically what they were they were just this body with a kind of random designed face and a black uh one of the green helmets that you could reuse and repurpose from the duke figure and you could bang out an army builder in less than a couple of seconds so like if you were to go down that path this is quite a simplistic design overall simplistic body design but it has much potential to be part of a bigger uh to expand the line quite a bit now one of the few things is uh, on Duke or on Stalker they, and Zap and a few others, instead of having this kind of plain color, they had this. If you can see it on the arms, that has this kind of like shirt pattern type thing on it. So they could have easily just sculpted that around the neck area, because they were kind of basically the neck here wasn't part of the suit. It was would have been skin tone and then whatever head was put onto it. So, but overall, he's a fairly decent figure. So. Head-wise, he has 
the standard ball joint. So you get some left and right, some tilt up down. He does have the diaphragm joint, but it doesn't really get utilized that much. I will say the webbing is a little bit restrictive for the waist movement because unlike figures with like, I think Flint has some as well, but it is restrictive on him as well. So the only ones that don't have it is Lady Jane and Duke. Duke's one goes across his strap or across the chest, so it doesn't actually interfere with the belt. But these are attached to the belt, so you do get some movement on it. But just beware if you overstretch this, you could technically snap these pieces because they are soft, kind of pliable, rubbery material. So just be wary of that. Arms can go up that much, can rotate all the way around. He has that same bicep swivel thing going on, just like with everyone else in the line. So you have the bicep swivel, you have the cut, the elbow cut, so it does 90 degree at a certain degree, or it's just about 90 degree at a certain area. And then you have the swivel in that. Again, wrists are on the swivel and has a, uh, have a hinge. So depending on which wrist you or which hand you have in, it will give you that swivel part. Um, Ford is good seating position for the legs. Can do the knees that much. Can do the splits that much. Does have that boot swivel. Again, he does have the ankles. I do feel the ones on mine are a little bit on the flappy side. They're not, there's not much resistance on them. So if you have him standing, he will tend to kind of lean forward a bit on his ankle. So I might try that, was it pledge or whatever the floor polish, uh, the furniture polish method where you put some furniture polish in it, just manipulate it a small bit and it gets it a little bit tighter. Um, what else did I miss ending on? He does have the peg holes as well. Now, I know some people have been wondering what sort of um, stands will work on these guys. The peg aren't very deep in the, or the holes aren't very deep. So if you have one of the McFarland stands, it doesn't go in all the way. I'm sure there's stands out there that would fit it, but if you wanted to and you had them spare, you could probably cut a small bit off the peg on this. And it would fit in a little bit better. They do fit in, but they're not a tight fit either. But um, I'm just trying to think if I have any other stands other than McFarland stands knocking around that might be suitable. But unfortunately, I don't. But all in all, I'm sure there's stands out there, or someone has probably has started making stands for these guys. If you wanted a display stand, there is a bunch of people that do display stands, clear display stands for uh, for NECA figures. So it's basically hit and miss whether they will work with these guys. But I'm just going to bring in some of the villain characters since I have them beside me. So here he is next to the Baroness. And we'll bring in good old Destro. So you can see him next to Destro. So there you go, guys. That is it from this review. Um, I know some people have been still on the fence about the... Uh, the um, Super 7 G.I. Joe stuff. Personally, I do like it. I just think the price point is a little too rich for what you're getting. I, if they were a little bit cheaper, I would be a more inclined, even though I have actually gotten nearly everything for the first two waves, I would be more inclined to pick these up. The only reason I picked most of these up is because I waited till they were on a bit of a, not full clearance, but they were a little bit cheaper. And I kind of hemmed and hawed about getting it. But other than that, they do look really nice. I do like the look and overall design. And Super 7 have done some nice stuff with the Reaction G.I. Joe line. So it would be cool to see some of those designs incorporated into this Ultimate line. Like, for example, as I said, the green shirts. They have done a bunch of green shirt figures that look similar in design to this kind of body book. And it would be nice to do that. They've also done a set of female figure or female kind of generic G.I. Joes and other Cobra Troopers that were in cartoon series, in the cartoon series, but were never made into figures. So it would be kind of cool to see that as well. So there you go, guys. I'm going to try and wrap this up and make it short and sweet. So hopefully it isn't too long for people to watch and it's not going to drag out. But um, here you go. I hope you enjoyed this video review. And as always, please hit that like and comment and subscription button and let me help. Or try and help me get to... I go of at least 
we'll try and go for 5k subscribers at least before summer and then hopefully we might get to 10k by christmas fingers crossed i'd love to get a lot more subscription base or subscribers so if you have any know anyone that might enjoy watching this video or might enjoy watching reviews for gi joe figures please feel free to share this video with them so see if i can get some more subscribers cheers guys and thanks for watching